You know, the effects of a minimum wage increase are a very heavily debated topic within the economics literature and policy literature is more general. you might consider increasing the minimum wage is obviously a desire to uh, make work more rewarding for people who are working for very low income wages. Uh, I think the hope is both that you would um, give people a greater attachment to their job or to the labor force, plus you're just trying to get them some more income to the extent that uh, sometimes the individuals who are working these low wage jobs are coming from relatively low income families. And I think you know, the important thing uh, to remember here is that when you increase the minimum wage, there actually aren't that many people in the country that like literally make the minimum wage. It's a little bit higher in Rhode Island because we have a higher minimum wage. But when you increase the minimum wage, you see increases for people that are earning even a little bit above the minimum wage. So, um, so the Hope Street Merchants Association is a group of about 35 um members and what we do is we meet on a regular base to just make sure we're all on the same page uh, what is happening on Hope Street. We try to organize events to um, raise money, to um, have a close contact with the community and we tried to uh, take a lot of steps to beautify Hope Street so to make it really a nicer place every year. You start. Yeah. <laughs> it will certainly affect every small business who would just uh, increase the minimum wage, pay their employees more, because uh, first of all, um, I think of um, satisfied employees to begin with. I think the more happier your employees are, the bigger the chances that they will stay and um, work harder to make it work and maybe also feel appreciated. Um, and then in terms of a wider perspective, we, we just discussed about it, um, it will just bring in more money. So which means that if employees get paid more, the money kind of comes directly back to sales in our own neighborhood. Sure. So the relationship between the minimum wage and unemployment is a very heavily debated topic in the economics literature. Um, I, I think that the consensus is that the employment effects, to the extent that they're there, are not large, at least in the short run. And then there are some people who take this literature and conclude that the employment effects are literally zero. There are other people who think that there are uh, small negative employment effects. Um, you know, that distinction might be important from a political or rhetorical perspective, but at some level, whether like zero people or one person lose their job, like that's not a major concern. The point is that there are not, at least in the short run, large um, employment reductions as a result of the types of minimum wage increases we've seen. And I think that's important because we can only judge this based on the types of policy changes we've had in the past. I think that is a distorted view, and I think it's an old argument that a lot of small business owners use, and um, um, I don't think it's true. I think it's really you've um, had that back in quality and loyalty and um, staff who are willing to work a little extra here and there and you know put in more effort, and I think it's really a win-win situation. Uh, yeah, a lot of European countries have much higher minimum wages or minimum incomes. And I think that both operates from the labor market side. You have a minimum wage if you're working, but those countries also have much more generous social safety nets just for people who aren't working or who have low incomes, completely apart from whatever we're doing to the labor market. You know, whether it is uh, 
feasible to implement here, you know, that's more of a political question. It seems awfully far from where we are now, so I, I wouldn't bet on getting there anywhere soon, but I don't think there's like a structural reason you, you couldn't do it. So for instance, the Scandinavian countries have traditionally um, had kind of a very egalitarian society and it doesn't seem to quite have the effects. In other places like uh, Spain or Italy, uh, what you've seen is actually a uh, kind of a, Portugal is another example, the, the labor market kind of splits into a uh, kind of full-time, full benefits portion where workers um, have effectively guaranteed employment, very, very high wages, uh, very generous unemployment benefits. Um, but then what happens is because workers don't want to be locked into that, then they end up substituting into both technology and also kind of part-time um, you know, much lower benefit, lower um, security jobs. And I think then the problem there is that if, if there's any difference, if the firm is trying to invest more in the education or the training of workers who are full-time than the part-time guys, then you're basically, uh, by having this structure, you're preventing workers from getting access to these jobs where they can really get trained and develop skills and eventually end up in higher paying jobs. Thank you.